Welcome to Switch Comics, my name is Marco, and today I have Wahoo Comics here with me. We just did a video here recently, uh, a comic uh, creator spotlight, that's what you call it, right? Yep, that's right. <laughs> okay. Just making sure, uh, it's like, it's uh, some form of those three words together. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm very happy to do this uh, second collaboration here with you. Today we are doing an episode of... Hot Comics! And we have some sweet books. Now, typically I do five books in this series, but since there's two of us, we each have five, and we're each going to do our own. And uh, today's topic, because I typically do themes, this one's a little looser, but we're going to talk about some comics that we think you should be investing in, because, the, you know, you have your confirmations. You know, we know She-Hulk is coming. We know, you know, Hawkeye's right on the, around the corner. We know Blade is coming. But let's get a little bit more speculative and ahead of the curve this time. Because, I mean, that's the best thing in collecting comics is, you know, getting a book for just a sweet deal and watching it explode and grow in value. Uh, and unfortunately, you know, sometimes you catch on to things a little too late, putting in too much money and, uh, you know, end up losing some money. And that's not what we're about on this channel. So we're going to start off um, with one of your books, correct? Yeah, that's right. So uh, I think we're going to start off uh, our number five that's most likely to show up in the near future to uh, kind of the spicy ones uh, towards the end that, that may or may not show up. But uh, the one that I think out of all of my picks is most likely to show up is Beta Ray Bill. And so the issue I would recommend buying and investing in is his first appearance in Thor 337. Uh, now, if you've been paying attention to the MCU at all, you probably recognize that they have started to develop the cosmic corner of their universe. And as they do that, I think there's going to be a lot more cosmic characters introduced, especially because the Guardians of the Galaxy, I think, are going to start probably turning over members, kind of like oh, yeah. the Avengers seem to have been doing. You know, Captain America and Iron Man, their, their arc's kind of over. Uh, and I think Guardians are going to kind of do that as well. And so... They're going to be looking for new Guardians. Uh, and Beta Ray Bill has a place on the Guardians in the comic books. Uh, and he's also, of course, a big part of the Thor mythology. Uh, and so I think in either of those types of movies, he could, he could show up. And if you've been paying attention just recently, uh, there is news that Adam Warlock is confirmed to be in the next Guardians of the Galaxy movie. And if you've been paying attention to any of his books on eBay, Ever since that announcement, those books had already been climbing, but they have shot up. And I think they'll continue to climb until the trailer. And so I fully expect that same thing to happen with Beta Ray Bill. Uh, I don't know what movie he's going to be announced for, but I really <laughs> do believe it's going to be fairly soon. And this book isn't an inexpensive one to buy. Uh, but I think when that trailer drops, uh, this book's going to spike. And so I've been buying as many of these copies as I can find when I do find them at a, a good price. Uh, if you're looking for a high grade copy, a pretty good deal is $150. Uh, you can definitely find them out there for less than that, but yeah, probably 150 is what you're uh, going to be going to be looking for. It's a very popular character, um, and I do think it's a good investment. And this is just a cool book to have. Uh, one of my favorite types of covers i know yeah, marco you really like covers are these covers where they interact kind of i don't know what it's, it's called but interact with the title oh yeah yeah you know, yeah there's got to be a name yeah. for it right yeah beta ray bill is bringing down uh mjolnir here and uh you yeah, know the thor logo is getting destroyed and crushed i think it's really cool and so anyway beta ray bill my number five character i agree with you so much on that one uh obviously i mean i have to have one myself nice. so i got the 337 mine is the canadian price variant very which i was nice. very excited to get uh and i do think it is a strong book uh i mean if you think about you know there's so many com uh, covers that are homaged and 337 yeah. is one that has so many homages so i mean it's obviously clearly an iconic cover which demands value for just that alone yeah being the uh, you know first appearance of Beta Ray Bill, an amazing Thor character, um, and we have like you said Guardians, we have Thor four coming up, and then the rest of you know Marvel. There's so many opportunities for that character, and it's one it's one a uh, book that I've preached for a while now. So if you're not picking it up, 
We got two people yelling at you now. <laughs> Definitely right. pick up Thor 337. So moving on to the book that I really am going to start talking about, one that I think is highly likely, is um, All New Ghost Rider, number one, the first appearance of Robbie Reyes. Uh, now you can get the cover A for about $50 now, which has seen significant growth. Um, this book you probably could have used to, you know, probably just six months ago was more like $25. So I mean, it's doubled in that time, which, you know, not huge, just $50. Um, but that being said, nothing's going on with him. If anything, less is going on with him because he was in the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. show for a little while. So and now you have, uh, you know, just speculation bringing him up. And I do I have to show off. I do have the, the cover A. It's in my comic boxes right now. But I have to show off my 1 in 25 variant. It is my favorite comic cover. Um, and that's, one, that's a harder one to find. It's going to be more expensive. We're going to focus on the cover A for right now because I do think that is a strong book. Pretty cheap. Even, at, you know, even though it's doubled its price, it's still very affordable to get. And uh, if you look at... Um, Marvel moving forward, uh, there's always the chance we could bring back the same Robbie Reyes from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but even if we get a different interpretation of him with all the multiverse things going on, who knows? But um, I think Ghost Rider is a character that cannot, you know, continue to, you know, not be in the MCU. He's super cool, and with that being said, I, you know, I don't think it's the number one priority uh, for the MCU, but we are definitely seeing a lot more diversity come into the movies. Uh, definitely with characters, you know, like Kamala Khan. I don't know if I'm saying it right. It might be pronounced differently, but that's how I say her name. Um, but um, I think Robbie Reyes, you know, would be our first uh, Hispanic in the MCU, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong there. Yeah, like, probably. That's well. I just remembered, um, I don't remember his name right now, because uh, I'm not super familiar with the character, but the um, Falcon's little sidekick that becomes oh, Falcon. Yeah. I can't remember his name, but... I um, told you if you didn't mention it. Yeah. <laughs> of course, of course, that's how that works. But uh, yeah, okay, so, but the first big player anyway. We don't have a, a big player. Um, I guess we will be getting Echo soon, so there's that. But um, But anyway, regardless... Super strong character I have a lot of faith in popping up at some point soon. Yeah, I really agree. Uh, you know, I mentioned Marvel is definitely developing the cosmic part of their universe. Uh, and I also think they're developing the horror part of their universe. Oh, and Ghost sure. Rider, of course, is a huge part of that. And that leads into my number four pick. And my number four pick is to invest in Elsa Bloodstone. And out of all the books that I'm going to show you to you today, I don't have my own copy of this. I'm really <laughs> hoping to get one. I'm jealous. I know Marco does, and I think he's already got his sin off for cleaning and pressing. Uh, he was telling me. Uh, yeah. so I want this book, so I'm preaching to myself here. Uh, but I really believe in, in her character and investing in Bloodstone Number 1, uh, which you can find uh, yeah, probably for about $200 for a high-grade issue. Uh, as I mentioned, Marvel is developing the horror part of their universe. We know a Moon Knight series is coming. Uh, we know a Blade movie is coming sometime in the next year or two. I don't know if you've seen this, Marco. Uh, Marvel recently updated their movie schedule, and so they're pushing some of their movies back. If you haven't yeah, I heard a little bit about movie. it, which yeah. I don't pay attention to movie dates anymore anyway. <laughs> I, I don't think they, they haven't been reliable for so long now. That's I don't even point. care. Let me know the weekend it's coming out, and I'll be yeah. there. You yeah. know? <laughs> Good point. So Blade might be pushed back a little further than it was, it was going to be. But anyway, the reason why I really believe in Elsa Bloodstone, of course, any franchise needs not just a male lead, but a female lead. And so you've got to think, well, what kind of female characters are there in horror, the corner of the Marvel Universe? And Elsa Bloodstone is right up there near the top. And that's why I believe in her character. Uh, and and as well as that issue is also there's it's a pretty low print run from what I understand, mm -hmm. and so it, it it's collectible for that reason as well, and so I highly recommend uh, picking up a copy, just not the copy I'm looking to get. Yeah, I'm just to, <laughs> don't don't get a steal or you know point it to me if you find one. Uh, but <laughs> also Bloodstone number four. Yeah, that's a that's a book I definitely strongly agree with. Yet again, a book I recently picked up. 
And have you been actively like searching, you know, trying to buy a copy of that book? Not actively, actively, but just kind of keeping my eye out. But I am starting to think I need to actively, actively. <laughs> I don't know if you if you've noticed if you haven't, you know, been actively like looking for it too much and looking at a lot of copies of it. Those books are beat. They mm-hmm. are very hard to find in good condition. And again, a low print run of a book that at the time nobody, you know, thought was going to be anything. Um, and it, it's funny, you know, to think when you think of had that mindset. Because uh, you have your, you know, you know your amazing Spider Mans and or AF 15s and stuff. You know, at that time, obviously nobody thought it was going to be anything. And then you kind of think, once like the Star Wars prequels, it's like, oh, okay, now we're making sure we're collecting everything. But you still have these gaps yeah. where things like Bloodstone One, uh, we were beaten again. You know, we're not taken care of and and uh, just destroying. And that is a hard book to find. Even uh, the copy I have. I'm expecting to get an 8.5 on, which is a decent grade, but for, you know, a modern book, you really should be able to find a, a higher grade of that fairly easy. But uh, unfortunately, that's not always the case. So definitely, if you're buying it raw, make sure you're inspecting it, um, because I've seen a lot of damage to those books. Hmm. Good to um, And again, super cool character. I, I love Elsa Bloodstone. I think she's super, super awesome. Uh, we're going to switch uh, into the Star Wars world here, and I'm going to talk about Darth Vader number three. I do not remember the volume number. There's too many vo- volumes of Darth Vader. But, of course, we are talking about first appearance of Dr. Aphra, a very cool Star Wars character, a book that I am still looking for. And uh, you can get this book for about $100 raw, and even graded. I think a 9.6 only goes for like 200 maybe even like 180 um, so I think it's a very affordable key right now. Uh, obviously the 9.8 is going to, I think, is maybe like 400 or something. So you're getting an expensive books at that point. But I mean, even that, I mean, for a potentially highly prominent character moving forward, maybe, uh, $400 isn't a lot, you know? <laughs> but, um, with that being said, uh, you know, there's been a, a recent resurgence, obviously with the Mandalorian has really kicked Star Wars into high gear. And we're uh, getting a lot more content, a lot of good content, um, which, you know, love or hate the the sequel movies. I'm kind of mixed on them. There's certain parts that I think were awesome and certain parts I think could have been done better. Um, But regardless, I mean, I think everything that's been coming out now has been awesome. Uh, Even the, the visions, the animated stuff. Did you watch that? I haven't seen that. I've seen uh, The Bad Batch is the only uh, recent animated thing I've seen. You need to check out Visions, man. Okay. I absolutely loved it. Um, I think there's two episodes. I was kind of like, mm, those were okay, and the rest were amazing. Okay. Uh, but, you know, I think Dr. Aphra is a uh, very cool character. She worked... Uh, you're not big on Star Wars, right, from what you told me? I, I, I'm... I'm more than the average person, but yeah. I'm not, you know, I don't think I'm as knowledgeable as you, certainly. Yeah, so uh, she works um, She works for Vader, and uh, she has two cool killer droids that work with her. Uh, and I, I mean that in the, in the uh, assassin, you know, bloody version, not just killer cool, they are actual killers. <laughs> so um, she's, she's a very interesting character that, uh, and again, you know, looking for some more female representation. Could be a very cool character to uh, add into the mix. It's uh, hard to say, like, you could potentially see her. She'd be a bit older, you know, but you could see her pop up in The Mandalorian or one of the adjacent shows, you know, Ahsoka or um, uh, Book of Boba or something. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity um, for her to pop up. And even, you know, I think there's a lot of room because they're, they're definitely building out what I think some people call the Mandoverse. But even within that, I mean,. I don't think you need to stick to any particular time period with Star Wars. I think you can jump around and make a story about whoever, whenever, and as long as you do a good job at it, people are going to like it. It doesn't necessarily have to connect. It doesn't have to be the MCU strategy. Um, But um, it's just a a cheap book, relatively speaking, that I think um, is such a popular comic character that I don't see them you know, leaving her out of live action for forever. Yeah, I totally agree. Great pick. Uh, like you said, I'm not even as big of a Star Wars fan as you are, but I really believe in that character and that book in terms of an investment. 
And I have read a little bit of the Darth Vader run with her in it. And I can't remember those two robots' names, but yeah, they're her like, it's triple zero. Uh, one, tri- yeah, triple zero. And what's and the then, other uh, one? Yeah, but they're uh, pretty hilarious. And uh, it's, yeah, it's a great character. And like you said, very popular in the comics. And so I do think that before long, she will make an appearance in, in media. What were you going to look like you got something? I, I just remembered the, it's the first appearance of those two droids as well. So yeah, it's a little, just, little, yeah, little right. bonus, you know, on that key. Yeah, um, and that's always a good thing to be investing in. You know, there's obviously, you know, you want uh, a certain character, but if the if a character has other first appearances that tie into that book or other reasons that could be a key, well, it makes it a much safer investment because if any of these characters become big, yeah, it's a it's a great book to pick up. Oh yeah, right, well, great put, pick. Well, I'm going to go back for number three, back to the horror corner of the Marvel universe, and a book I recommend investing in is this one, Tomb of Dracula, number one, which contains, of course, the first appearance of Dracula. So when I was talking about Elsa Bloodstone, of course, I asked the question, well, who are going to be the female leads in these movies? Well, another question we have to ask, well, who are going to be the villains? Who's going to be the villain of Blade? And there's a lot to choose from, but I really believe Dracula is coming soon. And of course, now we're moving into higher degree of, of, of uh, speculation. Like, uh, you know, I really believe in Beta Ray Bill. And, but I also personally re- really believe in Dracula. And one of the reasons I, I really believe in this character, as you might know, Kevin Feige has taken over oversight, not simply of the MCU movies, but he's also in charge of oversight. And I don't, I can't remember what the exact title of his position is, but he exercises oversight of the comics now as well and, and their direction. And I've started to notice that the comics are highlighting more and more characters who are important in the MCU. So I've noticed in the past year, Blade has become a much more prominent part of the comics. He's an Avenger now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Echo has also become a much more prominent part in the comic books. And I believe this is because they're getting ready to have their own movie and, and show respectively. But when you look at villains, Dracula has had a major role in some of the Avengers storylines recently, and also a major role in the Wolver- one of the Wolverine storylines uh, recently. And so he's a villain in two oh, different yeah. pretty big books uh, in, in the Marvel uh, comic universe. And I think that's because they're starting to build momentum for him to eventually come in uh, to the, the, the MCU. And so I really think he's going to make an appearance. And, and if we're looking for uh, real hot takes, I yes. think Marvel may consider in like in these corners of their universes, making like a Thanos of the horror universe you know, that, that maybe connects Moon Knight with Blade, with uh, some other property. And my, my, my hot pick is that Dracula becomes the Thanos of the horror universe that will unite a, a few different horror franchises. That could be definitely very, very cool. Um, I do think, yeah, Dracula, I mean, he's just too big not to use, right? Okay. And um, it was funny, you were talking about you know them working up characters in the comics and that kind of being a precedent to get us prepared for things happening in the movies. I've also noticed, and it's not a guarantee, but I've also noticed things in the action figure collecting side hmm. where you uh, will get characters a little bit before we actually start to hear about or see them in the movies. Like they did that with uh, Taskmaster. We got his character. Uh, he came out around, I think, Endgame or Infinity War. I think it was, I think it was Endgame, which obviously you know was just not too terribly long. Well, before Black Widow was supposed to come out anyway. <laughs> right. Um, you know, they did the same thing with uh, Black Knight. Uh, uh, I think he also came out around in game and uh, just uh, other various other characters that I'll see. And I'm like, OK, that's a cool character. And then I'll I'll see work up to, um, you know, there'll be an announcement that it's going to be in this or that movie or whatever. I'm like, OK, OK, I see, I see what you're doing there. <laughs> Uh, so moving on, though, uh, to Marvel Superheroes number eight, and this is the first appearance of Squirrel Girl, another book I don't have, I want to get. You can find it for about $100, and I think this one is um, another good pick based on kind of the Young Avengers kind of mindset. I know she's not a Young Avenger. Um, she, uh, is she part of Champions? 
Do you know? That's a good question. I do not know. Yeah, see, because I'm, I, uh, you know, I'll fully admit I haven't read any Champions book at all, but I know it, it does deal with those young heroes, and right. regardless, even if she's not a part of it, she, I, she, I feel like she's still part of that world, and, um, and <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with my dog right now, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I think you know she's a fun, goofy character um, that. Would fit so well in the movies, and the you know Marvel loves to have a good time, do a lot of jokes, be a little out yeah. there. Uh, I feel you know in some regards, obviously not in the uh, vulgarity, but still have kind of the crazy, um, just out of this world factor that like Deadpool has, for example. Sure. Um, and obviously that worked very well, and I think um, I think Squirrel Girl is another character, again a newer character. That uh, that people would really like to to see on the big screen and have some fun with. Yeah, great pick again. Uh, yeah, I haven't read a lot of her Squirrel Girl. I just remember she was uh, the nanny to Jessica Jones and Cage's baby uh, in some of the new Avengers run. And so mm. I, I think those characters are coming back. Who knows? If, yeah, there's lots of places that she could tie into. Um, all right. Well, my next pick. Is not a, a, a single character, but actually a team, and that's Alpha Flight. And their first appearance is in this one, Uncanny X Men 120. Uh, and this is one of those books, uh, kind of like Wolverine or Incredible Hulk 180 and 181, where there's a cameo appearance and then a first full appearance, and collectors are kind of divided on which is the book to get. So really, if you can uh, if you can get 120 and 121, they're both great uh, books to pick up, I think. But the one that I own is this one. Uh, 120, which is considered their first cameo appearance, uh, but a lot of people see it as their their main first appearance. Uh, and uh, I think this is a great book to speculate on uh, because something that we do know is coming, even though it hasn't been confirmed, are the X Men. Uh, Mark oh, yeah. and I, when we were talking about this, we were like, "Well, I said, well, the X Men haven't been confirmed, confirmed, but uh, uh, yeah, this feels like cheating to pick them." Uh, but of course, uh, as the X Men are, are introduced, and and I think my I think they're going to have lots of series with X Men characters eventually, and of course, all these series are going to need antagonists. And I don't think Alpha Flight is big enough to carry to be the main antagonist in like a main X Men movie. I think there's lots of other characters they could get to. I think they could have a big part in a series or, or something like that. And if you know their history, they tie in a lot to the Wolverine uh, lore. Mm -hmm. and that's how their connection with X-Men come. And of course, Wolverine is probably the most popular X-Men. Uh, and uh, so I, and, and, and so they start off as antagonists. And then later on, you know, they become protagonists in their own book. And so I think uh, that is something Marvel might look to do with some of their <laughs> villains, you know, to introduce them as antagonists in a property but then if they seem to take off, they could give them their own show. I like the Winter Soldier, of course. He has his kind of his own show with Falcon, but he started off as antagonist. True. And so Alpha Flight could fit in that category. They could test them out as a potential protagonist by making them an antagonist. And another reason I think they're a good investment is like we talked about earlier, you can find books that have multiple first appearances, then really only one of those characters have to show up. Uh, and, and, it, and it means something uh, for the value of the book. And so, of course, whenever you're looking at a teen book, there's multiple first appearances. And so this, I can't remember which Alpha Flight members are introduced here uh, fully, and then Sasquatch and Guardian, and maybe, seems like maybe one other. Uh, but uh, for, for those reasons, this is my uh, number two book. And if I didn't mention it, I know I, I forgot to mention the, the Tomb of Dracula price. Uh, the Tomb of Dracula is is the most expensive book on on my list. Uh, you can probably find a decent copy for about three hundred. Now this one you can find a high grade copy for about two hundred. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've been preaching X Men for so long now. I mean, you know, obviously ever since uh, they bought out Fox. I mean, it's a it's a no brainer. Um, and I, you know, I'm getting my hands on any X Men key I can get. That's one I don't have yet. Um, and especially with X-Men, I mean, anything within the first, like, you know, there's exceptions, but like first 150 kind of general, 
you're looking at some good stuff, you know? <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, I think, you know, Alpha Flight, especially with their ties to Wolverine, it could, you know, maybe that's how they decide, because we're definitely getting Wolverine. Like, I feel like it's, that's a no-brainer, but maybe they decide, it's like, this time, we're going to introduce them with Alpha Flight, maybe. Always a possibility. Mm-hmm. Um, it's hard to say. Uh, definitely, uh, uh, you know, I feel like a very, very solid pick. And then uh, moving on to my second to last book here, we're going to talk about Venom 3, which the only copy I have is the foil version of, uh, this is what the third print cover looks like, if I can not have it glare, but (laughs) (laughs) Um, it's one that I I, I want the first print, Um, I haven't been able to find it, Um, also, you know, haven't really been looking that hard for it. and the first print, I had a bit of difficulty getting a good value on it. Um, because this book has definitely calmed down after the King of Black event. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's still still up there, but it also seems like, for <laughs> at least in my, uh, my research, that uh, pretty much every copy of this thing has been graded. <laughs> I couldn't find a, a raw one to save my life, it felt like. Uh, so I'm going to roughly say a raw copy might run you about $150. But again, nine sixes aren't that far off. Um, I saw I saw an auction just in the other day for a 9.6. I think it was like $160. Uh, no, that was a lot lower than a lot of the other ones I've seen. But it still sure. feels like but two... It yeah, it did happen. It did happen. So it could again, you know. But I feel like two, 250, um, you can get you a 9.6, which is a you know, a solid grade and um, a very reasonable price for it. And again, talking about, you know, just little hints through other things like action figures, they just revealed um, during the Hasbro PulseCon, um, they're going to be making a null figure. Oh, um, wow. And it looks, it looks so good. I'm very excited for it. Um, and, I don't know. Is that a hint? Um, also, I don't want to get into too many spoilers. Did you watch the second Venom movie? Uh, I have not yet. Okay, but do you know about the end credit scene? <laughs> I know one. Is there just one? I think. Yeah, At least I there's know, only one I people are talking one. about. Is that a comic investor? I had to. Uh, yeah, we we got to know these things. Yeah. Um, so all, all I'm going to say is there is mention of a hive mind. Which have you? Did you read any of uh, the Venom run or yeah, King yeah, Black? Yeah, I've read all, all the Donny Cates okay. and I've read King of Black. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, you know that the Hive Mind is all connected to Noel. He is the symbiote god, and um, you know they might just do like a generic Hive Mind um, where they don't introduce Noel. It's always possible, but man, would it be cool to get Noel as this yeah. big bad new. Um, I mean, because you know, in the in the comics, he dealt damage. You know, he he messed up some big heroes. Uh, pretty much, you know, any any big player you you could think of, he he just threw them aside like they were trash. So it could yeah. definitely be super cool. Great pick again. Another reason I like that character. You know, just things that could be hinting towards it. Of course, we know the main villain in Thor four is Gore. Ah, true. Butcher. Yeah. yeah. And uh, if you know the story, yeah, one of his main weapon is the Necro Sword. The, the Necro Sword, yeah, well, yeah. And we later learn years later that that sword was forged by Null. And so, yeah, who knows? Those are planting seeds and, and things that could eventually end up in Null. So, another good pick, Marco. Well, for my number one, uh, this is a book uh, that I don't expect this character to be in the near future. Uh, but I think this book is worth investing in anyway. Um, it's this one, uh, Strange Tales 178, which is the first appearance of the Magus. And I think that's how you say it. I don't. It could be. That's Magus. how I say it. Yeah. I always, I always say Magus. And so, as I mentioned when I was talking about Beta Ray Bill, we we it is confirmed that Adam Warlock is coming to the MCU, and. I think there's probably long-term plans for that character. He has a huge role in the cosmic part of the, the Marvel comic universe. And so I think he's going to have a big part in the, the cinematic universe as well. And if you know anything about his lore, one of his main villains is the Magus, which there's been some retcons and 
different versions of the Magus, but it's always ultimately some kind of evil version of, of Adam Warlock. And so I, I think if they continue to develop the Adam Warlock saga uh, in the MCU, uh, that the Magus could play a role in that. Also, he was the main villain in the second Infinity Saga, you know, Thanos being the first one, uh, yeah. which was in the comics as Infinity Gauntlet and Infinity War actually referred to the second Infinity Saga, which the Magus was the main villain of. And so if they ever wanted to revisit stuff with the Infinity Stones, uh, he would be a, a great uh, character for them to consider. He's also head of a, a villainous organization, so to speak, called the Universal Church of Truth that has a role to play in the Guardians of the Galaxy in the comics. And so there's lots of places he could be introduced. But regardless of whether or not uh, he shows up, this book is still one that's worth uh, picking up, especially because it is considered kind of a minor warlock key. It's definitely not, you know, top of the shelf. It's not a Fantastic Four 67 or yeah. uh, Thor. I think it's, I forget what number or whatever the Thor is, but but, but this is a, a, a an issue a lot of people are starting to pick up because of Warlock. You can probably get it now for about $150, um, but I think it'll, it'll keep going up at least until the, the movie uh, comes out, or at least the trial. Uh, but I, this is also a special issue uh, for me. Um, I'm going to do a video uh, hopefully a little later on mm -hmm. uh i recently my my father-in-law uh found out i was collecting comics and he told me he had a bunch of comics in his basement that i could just have and so i went and there's some pretty sweet stuff and uh so this was one of them that i was able to to get from uh, my father-in-law uh for free and so i'm pretty excited about owning it and uh you can't be free yeah <laughs> no it can't be free uh and so i've got a couple other pretty nice keys that he's got that I hope to show off in a video one day. But for, for the purposes of today, this is uh, my number one pick. Alrighty. And yeah, definitely, uh, I think it's, it is kind of strange that we're getting Adam Warlock right after Infinity War. Um, when he, you know, didn't pop up before then, I'm like, well, this is going to be kind of weird. But I guess, you know, you, sometimes you just, you don't get all the characters in the movies and that's fine. But then to get him like immediately after is, is like, well, I think we could have reworked that a little bit. But uh, yeah, you know, maybe uh, maybe we're working to Magus being a new big villain. Um, it will be interesting to see how big of a role Adam Warlock is going to play, right. which will obviously determine the yeah, uh, legitimately yeah. of that's, Magus. That's why this is my most uh, least likely, yeah, uh, because it is a lot to be determined. So. Yeah, <laughs> the most speculative one for sure. But yeah. yeah, there's a lot on the table, but it's still a very solid choice and definitely a good book. If you can get it for free, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, especially if you find it for free, you definitely should pick it up. Yeah, I, I recommend that probably about any book, I would say. Right. <laughs> so for my, my last book is going to be, I, this isn't one that I necessarily think is a super long shot. However, it is a pricey book. And for the odds of it happening, I think is uh, you might want to be a little cautious on. Uh, we're going to be talking about Star Wars Jedi Mace Windu number one, and this is not to deal with Mace Windu. This is the first appearance of Asajj Ventress, which are you familiar with that character? Uh, I don't. I've heard the name, but I am not familiar. No. Gotcha. So you haven't watched Clone Wars, then, right? No, no, I've watched a few episodes, but not all the way through. Gotcha. So she is the apprentice of Count Dooku. Um, and, spoiler alert, alert, she survives the Clone Wars. <laughs> and, you know, for the most part, there's a lot of characters introduced in, in the Clone Wars that uh, get wrapped up and have, you know, the end of their arc, and a lot of them end up dying, especially, you know, a lot of Jedi end up dying. Um <laughs> <laughs> Waffles, what are you freaking out about, boy? He's just he's, something. Something's not okay. <laughs> but uh, uh, Ventress is a character, and I highly recommend you watch it. By the way, I I think it is uh, the Clone Wars series is better than any movie they've ever put out. Oh, wow. uh, <laughs> it, it's it's super solid, and um, uh, Ventress's character is really well done. Has a very compelling uh, story. She's a very cool character. Um, always cool to get. She's got that cool where it's uh, sometimes she has a double lightsaber, sometimes she puts them together, makes like kind of like Darth Maul like lightsaber. Um, 
obviously, you know, like I said, she's trained by Count Dooku, which is a super cool Sith. Um, and she's kind of a kind of a secret. And then, um, you know, because you're not supposed to have three Sith, it's only supposed to be two. So, you know, there's a lot of cool things going on with her. And then um, moving forward, I think, is actually the most interesting. They leave her off... Um, I don't. I don't know how familiar you are with uh, what went on when Disney bought um, Star Wars, but the Clone Wars was going on at that time period, mm-hmm. and it, it's hard to say. There's no, you know, real um, proof. I, I don't think anyway about the direction they were necessarily going. But to me, it felt like they maybe wanted to do maybe two or three more seasons because obviously it has to end. You know, Order sixty six has to happen and all that. Um, but it, it felt like they had a plan and they, they were, you know, they were getting there. Uh, but then Disney bought them and Disney's like, look, we'll give you one more short season, you know, finish, finish up everything you're doing. Right. We ended up getting more through Disney plus, but obviously plans were shifted. And I feel like Asajj kind of fell to the wayside. You know, you have to get your, your bigger characters and your bigger story elements, uh, settled. Um, that being said, there's a lot of uh, mystery and ambiguity into what happened with Ventress, and um, she kind of uh, was an outcast, really, you know, not really a Sith, not really with anybody anymore. She was out on her own, um, more like a bounty hunter than anything else, honestly. So, uh, with that being said, could it easily fit into... Um, the Book of Boba, maybe. And at this point, I don't know how old she'd be, but also she's an alien, so sure. maybe she ages slow or so. I, I don't know. She's got the Force, you know. Maybe that helps her out. <laughs> I'm not sure. But um, e- even if she's an older lady, I, I don't know. I think it's a strong possibility for popping up in something like that or in the Mandoverse somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, or, again, I think Star Wars is very underutilizing their ability to hop around to any time period sure. and just say, here's yeah. some more stories. Great so point. I don't know if that's at any point something that they would want to do. I forgot to mention the price of this book. Another one that was kind of hard to find a good price, um, a good average, I would say you might be able to find a raw copy for about 150 but graded copy of these things are pricey. Again, I do feel like it's another book that people are like, whatever it's just a star wars com and again prequel stuff so like oh my god none of these action figures are worth any money what have we done don't collect anything ever again and uh you know little be known that these books are are worth something and because like i think nine eights are going for i think it was like eight hundred dollars or something like that so and nine sixes you know we're under that obviously i don't remember the exact price but high grades of this book is are very expensive Um, so definitely keep that in mind. Uh, I haven't been actively shopping for this one. It's one that I've recently, I was talking to the shop with my boss about, and, uh, he mentioned it to me. So, I mean, full props to Shay. He was like, you know, just looking forward to the future. Um, you know, try to pick up the keys ahead of time. Like we're always talking about. Yeah. And he's like, Ventress, he was talking about picking it up for himself. He's like, this is one I, you know, I definitely should probably try to get. And, uh, you know, listen to the people that have, uh, more and better stuff than you <laughs> because they they i think they have a, a hint of an idea of what they're doing you know he's been in the game for so long i definitely take a lot of tips and advice from him so um yeah that, that's my my last book of the okay. day great pick and i fully agree like you said you know try to get on these books early characters that are very likely to show up at, at some point even if it's a little bit down the road you know you, you make most of your money in my opinion and other people have thought this as well. When you buy the book, yeah, you know, when you buy the book, much less than you sell it for, that's where the money is made. And so always be looking for when you can buy this. And it, it, yeah, obviously uh, the lowest you can find it, which is always going to be before there's announcements, before there's oh, yeah. a trailer. Uh, so these are the characters you're really to be looking at. So great, great picks, all all of yours, Marco. Yeah, and I do want to mention, uh, which I've talked a little bit about on the channel before, I used to do these, uh, you know, these hot comics every week, uh, but I do feel like it's just been getting harder and harder to get yourself ahead of the curve. I feel like yeah. everybody's specking on any big character, it, anything that's his first appearance, people are buying, and it's it's getting really hard for me to find books to, to tell people, because, you know, I want to make sure my advice is... Uh, 
something, you know, and I can't guarantee it, obviously, <laughs> but I, I want to, you know, try to get people a little inside knowledge into my brain, at least, is all I can offer, I guess, but, you know, I've, I've been right on some things, is all I'm going to say, and some books that I've picked up have gone up in value. For the most part, I'm pretty on it. I feel pretty, pretty good about what I got to say. Yeah, but I, uh, I, it's getting harder, man. It's getting it, harder for it us. It certainly is. I, I agree when we talked about well, who are some people that we could pick to speculate on. And at first, I think we were talking about not until people who couldn't show up to phase five. I was like, man, well, <laughs> I think anybody could show up in phase four. Everybody's getting speculated on. Oh, know? yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's certainly, you know, yeah, yeah it, is, it is harder and harder uh, to stay ahead of that game. And so you do have to also be careful. You can get wrapped up in the. Uh, specking on you know really obscure characters that yeah. <laughs> comes on and then the book goes nowhere. Um, so yeah, there's a two edged sword a little bit. Definitely, definitely. So um, if you all haven't checked it out already, we did a video over on uh, on Michael's channel. Um, and uh, if, you, if you haven't checked that out, it's kind of like a interview, basically, talking about some stories and some things going on um, and how I got into collecting and all that. So definitely watch that if you haven't. Uh, make sure to you know check out his channel. He's got a, gr a lot of great speculation and ideas, too. He's always picking up great books. And uh, you even inspired one of my um, uh, Hot Comics videos one time because I was, I was looking at... Uh, what book was it? You were. It was one of the pets. Yeah, it was. It was the pizza dog. Lucky the. Lucky, lucky yeah. Dog. Lucky the yeah, pizza yeah. dog. And then I, I made that video and talked about some pets. And since then, that uh, Jeff the Land Shark has gone from a you know, two or you know at most five dollar book to like a thirty forty dollar book now. So, <laughs> you know, thank you for that. Which it's a book <laughs> that I love. I love Jeff the Land Shark. Um, but it's not necessarily one that I would have thought about putting in a hot comics episode. So I definitely, you know, I'm always looking at other people's stuff, not to steal their ideas, but to get inspiration and again, think about stuff in a different perspective, a different light. So, um, definitely check out uh, his channel. Make sure you're subscribed. Um, you said you've been doing this for how many months now? Uh, I started putting out, I think I put out my first video about a half a year ago, and then okay. over the summer I've started to put out weekly videos. So yeah, you're, you're pretty fresh, even even fresher than I am, and I feel like I just started yesterday. <laughs> I hear that. But uh, thank you so much for popping on my channel, thank you so much for letting me pop onto your channel, and uh, yeah, any, you know, you talk about yourself or anything you, you have to say, talk about the weather if you want to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, obviously, like Marco said, we have a lot of things in common uh, with the information we share. Uh, usually my weekly videos, I'm sharing books that I picked up that week and why I think they're good investments. Uh, but a big part of what I also love to share on my videos are stories behind collecting. Uh, I, I, this is a fun hobby. It's, it's not meant to be, to me, it, for me, it's not just an investment, even though I do want to make money, but <laughs> yeah. I also want to have fun and, 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 and talk about the stories of finding a, a, a book that you never thought you'd find or, uh, or, you know, the heartbreak of a book you thought you were going to get that, you know, you, you missed out on. And so, you know, the video I did with Marco on my channel, I, that's, it, it's the comic collector spotlight series, uh, where I let collectors share stories from their collecting. Cause I just think that's a really fun, important part of the hobby. And so uh, if you also like hearing stories, uh, then hopefully you would uh, enjoy some of the content on my channel. Yeah, and I, I, it's a, a series that I like myself as well. I'm a big fan of, I like to watch interviews and stuff like that and get you know this backdoor perspective into the mind of uh, people that we're interested in. So if you're interested in my channel, I think you'd be interested in that. And it's also a cool way... Even if, you know, if I'm watching a video that you do on somebody else's channel, um, I could watch that and find out, you know, what this person's really about and it'd be a good, you know, sales pitch to whether I want to check out their channel or not. So yeah, for sure. I'd, I like that you're uh, doing that type of content. Uh, definitely it's not something that uh, I've thought about doing and, um, you know, we all got to have our, our different, you know, unique little things and I, I like that one. Yeah, I think so. I appreciate that. <laughs> so... I think that's going to be it for this video. Uh, everyone say, you know, hello to Waffles. He's, hello, Waffles. Uh, 
really energetic. He usually sleeps literally like 23 hours a day. And uh, <laughs> and for whatever reason, at 1.30 in the morning right now, he is uh, deciding to go crazy. Um, on, <laughs> Of course, only when I'm recording a video. So... But uh, you know everybody. Everybody loves waffles, and I think we'll come to forgive them. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, again, thank you for everything, and I hope uh, you know. Definitely, I'll be keep watching your videos. But maybe we can do something again in the future at another time. Yeah, I'd love to. Thanks for inviting me on your channel, and uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun doing this video. Alrighty, well, thanks to you everyone for watching, and we will see you the next time. Mm. Ah.